Secondly, Mr Deputy Speaker, with England in lockdown and people being told by the government to work from home if they can, I too asked the government to lead by example and now introduce procedures to allow virtual participation in debates and electronic voting. Most people will find it difficult to understand why MPs are being encouraged to physically travel across the country and gather in one place when they do not need to do so. Certainly representing our constituents is essential, but we do not need to be here to do it. The leader knows well that the technology exists to allow members to fulfill their duties whilst working remotely. If this second lockdown is not sufficient, what will it take for him to authorise switching these systems on? Well, Mr Deputy Speaker, I, I was very fortunate that we were able to hear the Honourable Gentleman in full this time. The last time he appeared, the technology didn't work, and we lost his dulcet tones momentarily. And it's also worth reminding Honourable and Right Honourable Members uh, that um, the other place lost its remote voting system, and that hindered the progress of business. And I think it is important that just as hospitals and schools provide essential services in health and education, so Parliament is performing its essential constitutional role of scrutinising the work of the government debating key issues and, above all, making and changing legislation. Our role has been a vital one throughout this year and continues to be so throughout this month, the time when the House is holding government to account for its approach to tackling the widespread impacts of coronavirus, legislating to shape the nation's response to the pandemic and legislating in order for our country to be ready for the end of the transition period. Now is not the time to hinder the ability of MPs to scrutinise ministers and legislation. But that is exactly what would happen if we were to follow the Honourable Member's suggestion for a full return to hybrid proceedings, ending elements of our business entirely. So therefore I continue to say to him what I have said before, that we have our duty to do. Our duty is to be here, our duty is to hold the government to account, and our duty is to legislate for the needs of our nation.